So hello everyone. Um, so I'm here to discuss about um, BP filter, which is a BPF based packet filtering framework. Um, oh, okay. So I'm like sorry. Uh, so I'm Quentin. I work at Meta. I'm in the Linux uh, user space team. So we work on various open source projects, uh, and I've been working on BP filter for almost a year now. Uh, and so we're going to discuss about packet filtering and globally firewall. First of all, what, B, what is BB filter? Uh, originally, it's uh, a user model per in the kernel, so a kernel module that starts a user space process. It's been developed by um, Alexei, Daniel, and uh, David Miller. Um, and basically what it was doing is that it would catch the get socket and set socket code um, from IP tables legacy into the kernel it would read the content and create a BPF program out of it. Uh, I'm talking about IP tables legacy because IP tables and IP tables legacy are slightly different. IP table legacy is using the get socket and set socket call, while IP tables is using the um, netlink um, protocol to communicate with the kernel. Uh, and the content inside uh, the request is slightly different. Um, so what BP filter was aimed to do uh, as I said, was translate the filtering rules into BPF programs. Uh, at the time, so there is a, a kernel module right now called BP filter, which doesn't do much except proving that it's possible to catch the catch up and set up calls. Uh, there was a patch series, a V1 and V2 from Dmitry Banshikov a few years ago that would actually implement the packet, um, the BPF program generation. Uh, but that was just a patch series which has never been, never been merged um, mainline. Um, and the project has been kind of abandoned since 2021. And I've been taking it over whole year this year and moving into to user space fully, so not in the kernel anymore. Um, the structure of VP filter in user space is uh, composed of two parts, the library first and the daemon running in user space. Uh, the library is linked to the client, which could be IP tables or NF tables or basically anything you want to use. Uh, it's used to communicate with the, the daemon, so it's going to send the request from a client to the daemon with the formats used in your client. If you use IP tables, it's going to send the IPT replace structure, IPT entry stuff. If you use NF tables, it's going to send the netlink, um, netlink messages to BP filter. Um, so it goes through a Unix domain socket where the daemon is links, listening on. And on the daemon, there are three major parts, which are the front end, um, the bytecode generation, and the program management. The front end is used to translate the data coming from the client into a generic format in BP filter. Um, the bytecode generation part, we'll talk a bit more about it later, but it's uh, basically creating the BPF program from the rules sent to the daemon. And the final part is just to load the program and attach it to the kernel. So libbp filter aims to be a very lightweight library, just, just used to transmit data across the Unix domain socket to the daemon. Um, we can see a piece of code here, which is uh, the proof of concept I've got for IP tables. Um, so I've modified IP tables to use libbp filter if you pass a dash dash BPF flag. We can see it's very simple and libbp filter, which is called here on BF IPT replace call, is basically sending the IPT, uh, IP table data to the daemon. There is no translation done at this point. It's just like the raw data sent directly to the daemon. And the whole leverage, like translation into a generic format and understanding what the rules contains is done in the daemon itself. So it doesn't need much more work on IP table. Um, <clears throat> So if we come back to IP tables, so that's IP tables legacy still. Um, the proof of concept, which is linked to libbp filter, uh, will send the IPT, what's called IPT replace structure, directly to the daemon, and it's going to be translated into a generic format, as I said, and converted it in, into a BPF program. Um, the way of the way IP table legacy works, that it when it communicates with the kernel, it either request all the rule sets or send the whole rule set. So you can't just add one rule, you have to fetch the whole rule sets. And you can't just um, request one thing at once, you have to get it all. 
Um, that's a downside of IP tables, which could be fixed um, in BP filter, uh, because right now, if you change a rule, you generate, you regenerate the whole BPF programs. Uh, it might not be mandatory, it can be fixed, but it's, uh, it's not a technical issue, it's more like a time issue, uh, which I don't have much right now, um, but it's not mandatory. Um, so when you use IP tables, uh, we can see the dash, I don't know if you see, yeah, you can see. We can see the dash I input, dash P U D P, and then an interface and an action. So basically what we are doing here is dropping every UDP packet coming in a specific, specific interface. Uh, so when the request goes to the daemon, what happens is that from the time we have the generic format in BP filter, it's gonna go through um, all, the, all the rules, and we have one here, uh, and it's gonna unroll the rules and create the BPF bytecode that goes with it. Uh, for IP tables, it's using, when the program is ready, it's gonna attach, load the program to the kernel and attach it to the BPF net filter hooks, which are available since um, Linux 6.4, um, which makes, which ensure the program is attached at the same hooks as IP tables is filtering. Um, that's quite new. Um, and before that, I was using the TC hook, but the issue with TC is that there is no routing done at this point. So if you want to filter on input or forward, for example, if you receive the packet on TC, you don't know yet if the packet is targeted to your host or not. So I had to do a, a fib lookup at this point. Um, and having the BPF net filter hook is much better, I think. Um, so IP tables provide a few things like counters, for example. So you can check with IP tables how many packets or bytes have been matched by your specific rule. And BP filter also support that um, using maps. Uh, you can filter on IP, on port, on protocol. Um, but IP tables legacy is not much used anymore. Uh, what's used now is more NF table. Uh, the difference between IP tables and NF tables is that NF tables will use Netlink to communicate with the kernel. So when you create rules with NF table, it's gonna use Netlink messages to send the rules to the kernel and receive data from the kernel. Um, it doesn't, like IP tables, like fetch the whole rule set or, or send the whole rule set, but just, just the difference. Um, and I've been working lately on supporting NF tables. Um, I've discussed with Florian Westphal and Pablo also recently during the NetFilter days. Don't know the name, what the name is, I don't remember. Uh, but we've, we've been discussing about BP filter and uh, Florian was interesting into using BP filter to offload NF table rules um, on XDP. Um, so I've been working on this, this prototype, which is a modified version of NF tables, roughly like it's done with IP tables. So there's a dash B flag, which will use libbp filter instead of Netlink. Uh, and basically, instead of trying to uh, modify the data structure or send something specific to BP filter. Uh, we just use the Netlink message, we send it to BP filter, and all the leverage of understanding what the content of the message is and what the rules are, it's done in BP filter. So, this at this point is still a, for BP filter a Unix domain socket, but the data is what you would send on a Netlink socket. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the data is sent to the daemon, uh, and the daemon use uh, libnetlink to process and parse the netlink data and, and try to make sense of it, basically. Uh, another big difference between IP tables and NF tables is that if you create a, rules, a rule with NF tables, it's going to send the netfilter bytecode to the kernel, not some kind of structure containing the IP to filter or the port or the protocol but uh, basically just bytecodes. Um, and this makes things a bit more complicated because we need to make sense of what the bytecode means um, because it's quite similar to what BPF bytecode is at this point. Uh, and so with NF table, when you create a rule, because the purpose to, of it is to offload, um, offload the filtering to XDP, uh, a, an XDP program is created by BP filter and attached to the kernel. Um, let's dive a bit more into bytecode generation. So basically what happened when you 
try to create a rule or filter packets. Um, BP filter is going to create a, what's called a code gen, which is a structure which represents um, a client and a hook. So if you use IP tables trying to filter packets on input hook, you're going to have a code gen for IP tables and that hook. Uh, if you try to filter on the forward hook, you're going to have a second code gen for IP tables and that new hook, a different hook. It's completely transparent to the, to the user, but internally that's how it works. Uh, and that code gen is used to generate the PPF programs. So it's basically a buffer of memory in which we'll um, write the BPF, inst BPF instruction one after the other. Um, another concept is the fixed ups. So um, let's say you want to um, count the number, number of packets, for example. And for that, BP filter is a function, BPF function, not a helper or a K func. It's a function inside the bytecode itself that's generated by the program, by BP filter. Um, but when you want to call the function, you don't know yet where the function will be located in the bytecode. So what happened here is that it creates a fix up, which is some kind of bookmark, uh, which will be used later to fix the jump offset to call the function that will be defined later in the bytecode. Um, other thing we have is the, so the custom function as I've described, uh, which in BPF is basically you've got your main program and then after that you've got another piece of code with an exit uh, instruction at some point uh, and you can jump to that first instruction after the main program and run the function. Uh, so BP filter for NAS supports XDP, TC and BPF net filter hooks. So XDP is used for NF tables, BPF net filter is used for um, IP tables uh, and TC is not much used anymore, but it could be definitely used. Uh, it's working and it works fine. Uh, it's just that for now, IP tables is um, used with uh, NetFilter hooks. Uh, all the programs generated by BP filter will use the dynamic pointers, the BPF dynamic pointers. So whether it's uh, TC, XTP or NetFilter, um, the generated program will first allocate a dynamic pointer and create the slice for the various headers uh, if the headers are available, depending um, XDP or TC, for example. Um, and finally, the counters. So each program will have its own map. And for each rule, if a given rule match the packet coming, it's going to update the counter for that rule. And in user space, you can see the content of the map and see which rule as much how many packets and how many bytes. Uh, and because you will have one program per interface, you will also have counter per interface. So you know for, uh, we don't have it anymore, sorry. But if you create a rule to drop every packet, you will have a BPF program for every interface dropping all the packets. And then it means you'll be able to um, know how many packets on each interface has been dropped because the counters are defined per interface and per program. I don't know if you can see that right, but that's roughly what bad code generation looks like. Um, so the emit macro is used to tell, um, basically add this instruction to the program. And one instruction after the other uh, will add basically the rules inside the BPF, um, BPF program inside the, the buffer. Uh, this is, the, for example, the, the call to um, the counter update function. So the function to update the counter is located after the program, and this is how it's called. So we set the right values into the proper registers, and then we call the function, and the function uses the values in the registers um, to update the map counter for a specific rule. Uh, and we can also see the emit fix up call, which is basically what I was talking about, which is um, we can uh, update that jump to the function later when we know actually where is the function located. Uh, the output on the right is what's uh, received, uh, what's coming from BPF tool output. So when the program is uh, loaded and attached, you can dump the content and that's basically what it, lo it looks like. Uh, something's missing here, which is BTF info, as you can see. So it looks a bit weird when I call my function uh, because it has no name and no BTF info at least for now. 
And from the command line, that's what it is. So you call IP tables with your dash dash BPF uh, flag, and it's going to use BP filter in the back end without you knowing about it. And, and then you can see that your program is effectively running on the system. Uh, there are two programs here, which are the main difference here is that the O2, the first one is on the input hook, and the second one is on the output hook. Um, but both have been created with VP filter and will basically drop every UDP packet on the given interface here. Um, and the programs are pinned uh, in the BPF file system, so you can restart BP filter and not gonna change anything. You won't like let every packet pass on the system. Um, it's completely fine. And so some performance number. So I take get, take this with a, a grain of salt. Uh, so it's BP filter compared to IP tables. So at this point, um, the packet processing is done at the same point in the kernel, which is uh, input in that case. So the IP table rules are located at the same point where the BPF program is running. Um, if we were to use XDP, for example, it could be widely different. Uh, but it's to me, I think it makes more sense to see uh, roughly what it means if you filter at the same time. Um, and the more you, the more rules you had, the faster it gets, and and the more the gap between BP filter and um, IP tables grows. Um, I've been working on uh, benchmarks and tests for uh, NF tables, um, but for now, uh, for for NF tables, uh, it's quite new. So I've been I'm able to create chains and drop packets and stuff, set policy on chains. Uh, and I'm almost done on IP filtering, IP address filtering. Um, the trick here is that, again, I have to make sense of the net filter uh, bytecode coming um, in the packet, coming uh, in the request. And from the net filter bytecode, try to create the BPF code that goes with it. Um, so it's almost done, but not done enough to, to make benchmarks. So it's not there yet, but soon. Um, I've got a few links here, which are uh, so the BP filter repository, uh, but also the IP tables proof of concept with the dash dash BPF flag, and same for NF table. And that's about it. Um, if you have any question. Hi, Quentin. Uh, how do you configure the, the daemon? Like, uh, I take it the interface, you don't need to um, to configure it in the daemon, the interface to which you want to attach the program, you uh, you get it from the uh, from the IP tables rule. Uh, but if you want to um, change the XDP mode, for example, use driver or generic or float, do you, do you support that at this time? Um, so for IP tables, it's not XDP, so it doesn't matter really. Um, for NF tables, uh, for now you don't. It's just um, the XDP generic uh, mode. Uh, but it's still, so that's something that needs to be able to be configured for sure. Uh, the NF table part is very early and I'm working with Florian to get it in integrated properly and have the, the right features. Um, but eventually, yeah, the point will be to be able, so NF table is a way to use BP filter. It's not, it's not the front end for VP filter, it's a way to use it. Um, so eventually, depending what Florian thinks, we might say that for NF tables, we always use the XDP generic, for example, uh, which doesn't mean that I can't have like a generic front end, which allows me to do whatever I want, use any hook I want and use any mode of attaching XDP program I want, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Another question. Um... Do you have a way or do you plan to have a way to uh, query the daemon to retrieve the bytecode that you produce? Like, instead of uh, trying to load and attach directly the, the, the program, do I have a way to just translate my rule and get the program back and do whatever I want, like deploy it on uh, a variety of interfaces or ports or whatever? Uh, it can be done right now, uh, but it's, uh, it's an interesting feature. Um, it can be done because the way I work on it and I develop it, I need to attach it all, all the time. Um, but yeah, ideally, I, 
ideally, BP Filter wouldn't have to manage the program it itself. Uh, so it could be focused on just creating the program and then you do what you want with it. Um, but there is no like generic user space tool to manage programs. And uh, there is also the XDP issue where you can attach one program. And so, but ideally, yeah, I'd like to just create the program and don't worry about it. You do what you want. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to ask the dumb question. Uh, so, you know, this thing is technically called eVPF. So uh, what about having something like the, the BSDPF tools work to do the packet filtering using eVPF on Linux? Because, you know, those BSD people, they keep talking about how they've got the better, you know, packet filtering interface and all that other stuff. So if you're already making this to be work like a firewall and a packet filter, what about bringing the, bringing the tools over too? Sorry, can you can you repeat the question? Sorry, no. I think I just stunned you into confusion. <laughs> Basically, um, you know the the name BPF right yeah. refers to Berkeley Packet Filter, and the part of it that we have in Linux is essentially the engine part. But we never had the tools part of it mm. that the BSDs have, and a lot of people talk about how the BSD PF is better than ours or whatever. I don't really care about that part. What I care about is kind of for the lulls. Can we have that? That tooling now work to be to do firewall things with BPF. Well, yeah, I hope so. All right. Yeah. I don't know if it's satisfying enough for you, but uh... <laughs> I have to ask. I, I have a question about the maybe um, the the benchmarks. Um, so I'm guessing that this is uh, coming from the perspective of like a linear list of rules, and it's evaluating. Like performance of like the last roll will be a hit or something like that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so maybe, maybe that's some context. And I, I understand that NF Tables um, has come up with new different syntax to try to allow firewall rule writers to express more complicated things. So use maps, for instance. So similar, like drawing on IPC and various things like that. So I guess my question is kind of get to getting maybe to the expressibility of NF Tables and the Avoiding linear iteration to, to implement your firewall. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and how, how does that kind of? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I was saying like take this with a grain mm -hmm. of salt because mm -hmm. it's it's not exactly how how you would define rules in real life. Um, and for NF tables, you would, for example, create a set, and that and, and that's why I'm not publishing for now at least um, NF table members because you you can like just put a bunch of rules and throw packets at it. And obviously, XDP would be faster than NF tables because it's before then and you don't have to allocate anything. Um, but uh, I'd like to work with Florian to actually have real benchmark that they run on NF tables and compare it to what it looks like for BP filter and have something that's really meaningful and that we can say, yeah, but you're doing it this way and we don't do it this way. Um, so the benchmarks need some work. Um, but I just wanted to have like a first overview of what it could be like. <clears throat> Couple of questions here. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, for each rule, does, do you generate the separate BPF program? No, so there is one BPF program for each, um, uh, sorry, interface for each hook. If you do, you want to try to filter five different IPs for uh, one for the input hook, for example, um, and you create five different rules. Then you'll have one program with the rules inside, and, and it's going to be enrolled, and it's going to process the rule one after the other, but it's just one program. I see. And then do you provide any dynamic uh, rule injection mechanism? Like if I, if I want to add the sixth IP to filter out uh, how one can do it, it's like replace the whole program? So the the old program, yes, needs to be replaced because whatever happened, like the program is in the kernel, you cannot modify it. You need to reload a new one anyway. Nice. Uh, but something I would like to work on as soon as possible is try to regenerate just parts of the program and not all of it all the time. Yeah, the, like dynamic rule injection could. Exactly. Yeah. Have you tried playing on with how many rules? to see how many rules you can support before the verifier gets unhappy? Uh, the issue, I haven't tried to 
So what I've tried is like making as many rules as possible. And the issue I had was that um, if the rule doesn't, if the rule match, I would jump to the end of the program. But that at some point was limited because the jump offset is 16 bits. So I had to find a new way to actually get out of the program if the rule matches. Uh, and since then, I haven't tried because one of the issues is, as we were saying, like I, gener I generate the whole program every time. And I should instead generate the rules, store it on the side, and when a new rule happens, I will just stick everything together to have the program and load it. Because for now, it's a bit slow. If you, I, I've been up to like 6,000 rules, um, mm. but not much more. But we could do definitely much more. There is space for it. Uh, I just need to be a bit smarter when I create the program. Interesting, cool. Oh, yeah, we do something similar. Do you, so do you generate everything in bytecode, or do you have like some functions that you make in C and compile with Clang, like some static functions that you have? Like helpful? Just bytecode. Um, just by command, and I use KFunk and BPF helper, obviously. Frequent, uh, what about chains in IP tables? Do you support them? User defined chains? Yeah. Not yet. Okay. And what about uh, external uh, models? So IP tables can be extended by out of three models. Uh, I believe it's also not supported. And no, for now it's. Uh, <laughs> Basically, uh, IP source destination with a mask, same for the port, uh, protocol interface. Uh, so it's, it's basic filtering. Uh, I know that Mitri in his patch series has been working on um, UDP matchers, uh, which are not supported here. Um, and for now, discussing with the NetFilter maintainers, because that's a whole point for BB filter to be used somewhere, is that uh, I should more focus on NF table than IP tables legacy, which is not much used anymore. Okay, yeah, thanks. I mean, maybe what you could probably do is like allowing users to have like their own custom C snippets and then inject this into specific points for the BP filter stuff, right? So that you have more customization if you yeah, want. Yeah, definitely. Um, so BP filter will focus on what it can do already. Uh, and if you have some quirks you want to do, you can inject C inside it. That would be great. Thank you. Silly question. Uh, as far as I remember, there were some uh, parts of the first version of BP filter that were merged into the kernel, like the uh, UMH uh, part at the time. Uh, given that you're moving uh, everything almost of it to user space, um, what happens to the components that are already in place? I was expecting Daniel to ask this question. Uh, <laughs> um, I need to remove it, and it's going to be done. Um, I commit to do it this year. Uh, it's, You're it's, being recorded. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that, <laughs> and I, I will do it um, because it's not used in user space um, in the kernel. Sorry, the kernel module is not used, and it doesn't do anything. Basically, there is no filtering in it, into it. It's just like plug somewhere in the kernel, and, and that's it. And recently, um, someone found out that in Ubuntu, it's enabled by default. So in DMS, you can find BP filter message, even if it doesn't do anything. Um, so I need to remove it, um, for sure. Okay, sounds good. I think the award for most questions for a talk goes to Quentin, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so somehow builds upon the question over there. So I think with BPF, you have a lot more expressivity in, in the language itself than you have with IP table rules and, and everything. So I think there is a lot of potential for optimization. So, so like putting several rules together in a clever way to optimize latency and so, so on. Did you think about that? That's tricky. Um, if you define your rules in a specific order, the program like PP filter or even like IP tables or NF table or anything can't know if you're right or wrong. And, and that's something I've been discussing with that filter people is that you, you, we need to find a way for the user to do better rules instead of optimizing stuff um, on the kernel and like user space side, whatever. Um, there is actually a tool, uh, I don't remember the name, but from an F table that will check your rule sets and, and try to compact stuff and to just to create a set or something. Uh, and that's interesting. But yeah, 
it can't know if if the rules are in the right order and it can't reorganize and like say okay i've got uh, like filtering an ip then a port then an ip i'll compact the ip together and create a map of it and, and look into it because the order matters yeah i, I mean i'm thinking very easy but maybe there's already th things in in the stuff about but like you have hundreds of you rules filter this ip filter this ip filter this ip filter this ip that you can then i don't know have some masks on the on the things that you can express in bpf in, in c code basically or in bytecode that you couldn't really do in in, in the filter rules but maybe they, this is already possible in the filter rules already I think maybe like one thing that is interesting, I mean, like if you look at the typical Kubernetes case, um, if you have many services that get installed, right? And then maybe you can have like some profile guided thing that looks at, okay, like it's most likely that this specific service is hit, but it's at the very end of the rule list. So maybe you could reorder it, at least things like that. Yeah. But it's tricky, I agree. It, it's <laughs> tricky, I agree. Uh, and. Like the, the whole optimization first of the bytecode generated and of the rule sets is a very interesting topic. Um, I'm unfortunately, I don't think I'm there yet, um, but I, I'm more than eager to have a look at it. And, and I'd like to be at that point for sure um, and try to make things faster too. Um. There's just add one, one thing that's also tricky with combining rules is then you have to worry about what it looks like from metrics and counters. And if people have created a certain number of rules, then they usually expect to have all those counters or that they, they line up in a way. At least that's something we have a problem with. Uh, I have a question as well. Do, so you mentioned IP tables and NF tables. Do you also have uh, like a programmable API where the, you know, someone can link against the BP filter as a library and create the programs? Uh, so now if you use BP filter, you can send uh, there's a raw interface to send data, but there is nothing on the BP filter, BP filter, BP filter side to receive it. Um, but I'd like, to, I'd like to do something like that because um, if you use IP tables, you're limited to what IP tables allow you to do. And same for an F table. And what if you want to create a rule and attach it to TC, for example? Um, so I'd like to create a generic interface to, to be able to do that and have the full extent of features offered by BP filter. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot.